it's Jennifer. Welcome back to My Flagstaff Home and this series on the Holiday Home Organizing Challenge. This is a challenge that's being put out by um, a website called Clutterbug. It's at clutterbug.com. I'll link it for you in the space below. And um, she has put out a 58 page guide that you can download for free at her website and it walks you through this 12 week home organizing challenge and the holiday part of it is means that it's taking place leading up to and through the holidays but the idea is that you're not organizing your house from top to bottom everywhere you're just starting with the things that matter for the holidays so cleaning up decluttering your main living spaces um, you know, like at Thanksgiving, people are going to be around in your kitchen. So decluttering and cleaning your kitchen, even taking a look at your closet so that you're not uh, losing sight of things that you have in your closet and then going out and making purchases so that you have an outfit to wear for Christmas or something. And um, when you actually had something you could already wear. So, so the idea is just focusing in for 12 weeks on those things that matter most for the holidays. Okay, so if you have joined this challenge late, um, it's not too late for you to get started with it. You can go over to the Clutterbug, Clutterbug website and download the guide that she provides for free. And then um, start with the areas that matter the most to you. And then you can, you know, double up some weeks or you could finish the challenge after the holidays are over. All right. So last week I gave you the introduction and I said that I'm going to do two weeks at a time. So I actually did two weeks worth of the organizing challenge in one week this time, but now going forward, I'm, I'm not going to do another video about this for two more weeks and I will cover the next two sections. So this last week, what I did was I organized, um, and decluttered my master bedroom closet and also the outerwear that I have, meaning um, shoes, boots, coats, hats, gloves, mittens. And so so that is a particular closet that I have, my, my coat closet in the by the front door. And so I organized that and also my master bedroom. So I'm what I'm gonna do right now is go to a clip that shows you my bedroom and my coat closet before all this started and then I will take you to how it looks after. So weird angles here, sorry about that, but just tight spaces. This is my closet and um, this actually John and I share this closet um, and his stuff is over here and right straight ahead that's where I put my hang dry stuff out of the wash and then my dresses. But this is my stuff over here. So I have this part and then down here I have these clothes and then this is um, winter stuff. And so I just put, I switch it out from winter to summer. So if you take a look at my how my closet currently is, I have it loosely organized by color I know some people make fun of people like me for doing that, but I just think it's easier to find what I have. You know, if I have something and I need white to go with it or I need blue to go with it, then um, I know where to look in my closet. And I keep my my workout clothes down here. I actually hang my bras. Um, just It's just easier for me to put them there than out in my dresser out in the bedroom because I'm in here changing clothes. And so then I just kind of, you know, go down this way. You can see a lot of t-shirts and things that I'm going to be switching over for winter. I'm going to be putting away my summer stuff. And then some of, some of the stuff is both seasons, so or both seasons, cool weather, warm weather. Down here, I have a lot of jackets. These are uh, quite a few of these I've gotten from doing races, you know, my long distance, half marathon, full marathon things. And then I have some stuff in here I know I need to get rid of because they are kind of work clothes from when I was at the university. And over here I have purses and totes that I absolutely need to thin out. Shoes that are here. I have some shoes that are, um, well, here and under here, but kind of behind the clothes. And underneath here, <laughs> there's some workout stuff under here, and this is a mess. 
It's just like thrown in a pile of stuff. I'm not even sure what's there. I need to go through that definitely. So here's my goal for this, this closet. I am going to start by taking all of my short sleeve shirts, all the summer things, folding them up nicely, my capris, all of that, and then I'm going to put them in this basket and take all of that stuff and move it on, you know, put it onto hangers because we are now in October and the season, even though it's still very warm here for some reason, it's going to change soon. And then, um, then, and I ta have been getting to a point where I have been, uh, every time I get a new shirt, I try to look for a shirt to get rid of. So I'm not sure how many things I'm going to actually get rid of clothing wise, but I am going to get rid of some clothes, some work clothes down here. I'm absolutely going through my purses and totes. And then this right here, oh, such a sad thing. <laughs> This is my Michael Kors bag that I got, I don't know, four years ago, three years ago, and the handle broke on it. Let me show you. So right here, this came out of this. But the good news is that I found a company that repairs designer shoes and bags, and um, I have I looked into it about a year ago and then just didn't. And But the way I look at it is I spent $400 on this purse and I was willing to spend $400 on it because it seemed like a very oh, versatile style so that I could use it for many years to come. So it's probably gonna cost about $60, $65 to get that fixed. Why would I not do that so I can still use a $400 purse because right now it is no good to me at all with a broken handle. Okay, so yeah, that's my plan. I'm going to go ahead and get going on this and I will show you the results when I'm done. I am changing the angle of my camera so you can kind of see. All right, this is where John and I keep our jackets and coats for winter. His are on this side, mine are here and back here, and then Tucked back there are some of Monica's winter clothes, my dog. Uh, I do have some boxes and things that have been shoved back here and I'm not even sure what's in them. So definitely need to straighten up this closet. This up here is an organizing system that I'm actually really proud of. It's just that it's gotten a little messy. These are wine bottle gift containers. You know, those heavy, heavy cardboard kind of things. Um, and I took the lids off of them and got a whole bunch of them, like 30 of them, and just laid them on their side, just stacked them on top, and they're really great for keeping scarves and gloves and mittens and even hats. And so, but what's happened is, like I took this off of my jacket, I need to put it on there. I've got some umbrellas up here. I have, what I really need is a few more of these, maybe five or 10 more of those to put in here so I can organize what's on top. And I also have some exercise <laughs> equipment. And that's gonna be my thing to tackle in this closet. I'm gonna go. Okay, so you saw right there what I, the work I had cut out for me. Now let's take a look at the results. Hey you guys, boy, I'm getting rid, rid of a lot more things than I thought. All right, so I put my summer t-shirts and dresses down in this little basket here and took the stuff from that basket and hung it up. I actually got rid of some of the things. As you can see, well, I actually have more clothes that are for uh, winter and, you know, the colder months because I live in a cold climate So than I do for summer. So, um, so it's filled up a little bit more. But, um, yeah, I'm going to show you the pile of stuff. Down here is where a lot of things are gone. I got rid of jackets. I got rid of a bunch of purses and totes that I just thought, you know what? Stop telling yourself you're going to use them. You haven't used them in years, so, you know, get rid of them. A few things up here I have mentally tagged to pay attention to, and if I don't wear them this winter, they are going away. I keep saying to myself, oh, but I should pair that with something. I should put this underneath a sweater, and then I don't. And so I've kind of mentally, you know, made note of that. So let me go ahead and show you what I've gotten rid of. 
Okay, this big stack of t-shirts, um, there's a couple of sweaters, some shirts, uh, you know, this is a really nice work jacket. I think it's from Chico's and I wore it a lot when I was working, but now I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm working for the university, but online. Um, these boots my mom gave me, I never wear them. I have a lot of other boots. And then look at all these bags. Um, <laughs> this was like something free that came from Ulta, you know, a Kohl's bag. That's actually a really nice purse, but I just never really want to use it. Um, and a couple of bags that I used a lot at one point. They just don't really serve my needs anymore. Hey, and here is my coat closet. I uh, moved some things down here. That's actually a knitting project that I have, and I do keep some of my workout uh, equipment in on the floor of this closet. There's some weights over there because I work out in the living room when I do work out at home. So then uh, my, I looked through my coats and really did not see anything I needed to get rid of. I had a sweater in my other closet that I moved here because I keep forgetting to wear that. And then the upper part was the main area where I needed to clean things out. I need a few more of these and have not been able to find them. So I neatly stacked a few things over on either side. Those are some hats that are never gonna fit into those. But I have a couple of things here that's an umbrella and a dog jacket. Um, but other than that, I kind of um, I rolled up some scarves and put them into the tubes and got that kind of straightened up and I feel pretty good about it. And I like that the bottom here is not completely packed with a bunch of stuff. There was a box of John's things that didn't belong in there and there was another little uh, case down there that I moved. And um, yeah, so I'm feeling pretty good about this closet. That was really fun. Now what I found from this whole thing was that the, the hall closet, the outerwear thing, that didn't take me very much time to do at all. I had some decluttering to do down below and up above. Um, but that one was a, a pretty easy one, but I still was able to get things, you know, looking a little bit more spruced up. And then the, the closet, the bedroom closet, master closet, that was shocking. I did not have any clue that I was going to get rid of so much stuff. I really didn't. I didn't think I had that much to get rid of. Um, yeah, as I was switching out my summer clothes for my, for my, um, winter clothes that was it was really good to be thinking about getting rid of some of those things because I did get rid of a couple of t-shirts and I did look at some of my you know my some my uh, cold weather clothes and I thought I haven't worn that shirt in years and I don't even really like it so let's just get rid of it but yeah I ended up getting rid of a lot of stuff and my closet every time I go in there now it just feels so much better now, one of the things the challenge suggested is that you put some outfits together and keep them toward the front of your closet. I didn't do that. The way I have my closet organized, I can see everything I have. And I was thinking in my head while I was organizing what some of those outfits might be if we actually get to get out and do any kind of events for the holidays this year. Um, yeah, who knows about that? But still, I'm happy I did that. Okay, so the next two weeks I'm going to be focusing on, so it's week three and week four of the challenge. Let me put my glasses on here. So the um, this is focusing on the kitchen. So the first one is decluttering the kitchen. So of course this is an important thing to do. Meals, food often have um, a, you know, a big part to play in holidays. We have Thanksgiving coming up. We have Christmas where we often get people together and even if it's not on those holidays a lot of times we have social gatherings and they involve food so um, whether we get to do that this year or not it's still a good thing to focus on so um, yeah so decluttering the the kitchen is the first thing and it's there are some suggestions here um, and it said, um, it says, it's time to search through your cabinets and drawers and ask yourself, have I used this in the last 12 months? Do I love this? And would I buy this again? If the answer to these questions is no, it has to go. In particular, she suggests you take a look at unused coffee mugs, extra dishes, food storage containers, 
stuff that's under your kitchen sink, um, outgrown children's items, unused water bottles. I do know I have some of those. Um, scratched pots and pans, expired food, unused utensils, and gadgets that just take up space. So yeah, some things were kind of flying through my mind when I read that. Um, on the back side of that paper, um, it says coffee or hot chocolate station. Do you have a space in your kitchen for hot beverages? What are some things you can do to create one? Yeah, I. you know what? My husband and I created a coffee station in this house that we moved into a year ago. We've never really had one before. We had an area where our coffee pot was, but we never really had a station Best decision ever. It is a place where I can store the mugs. It frees up space in other parts of the kitchen. I love it. So yeah, best decision ever. Um, baking supplies. Do you have a cabinet just for baking? Can you rearrange to create one? What could you put in that baking cabinet? And then spices. Are your spices organized? Do you have all the spices you need for holiday cooking? And what are some things you can do to organize your spices better? Now, this one, okay. I, um, I don't think I'm going to have a lot to declutter in my kitchen when it comes to these things. I do have some nice organ organizing systems, especially for my spices. So even though I'm not going to need to declutter or organize my spices, I'm, I think I'll go through to go to look at expirations. Yeah, that's always a good thing to do. Um, but even though I don't have a need to do a lot of stuff in there, I'm going to be excited to show you how I organize my spices. So, all right. So that is for week three. And then week four of the challenge is about deep cleaning the kitchen. So on in this guide, there's a little bit of a blurb that she writes about this. And then it says, she says, it's time to scrub. Let's get your kitchen sparkling just in time for holiday baking, cooking, and guests. Roll up your sleeves and clean the following spaces in your kitchen and check them off when you're done. So I love this, that she gives us some specifics instead of just saying clean your kitchen. She's making us focus on some specific things in the kitchen. So the fridge, we need to, it's a really good idea just to take the stuff off your shelves and make sure that you clear the shelves off and then decide if those things should go back in your fridge. So the fridge, the freezer, the oven, cabinet doors. Yeah, clean down those cabinet doors. We tend to ignore those. Um, I mean, I'm not just saying you should. I know I need to take a look too. Um, walls and the ceilings. How often do we look at our walls or the ceiling to see, or ceiling fans to see if they're dusty? Um, and floors and kick plates. And so, yeah, take, take a look at those things. And then on the back side of this, it says, let's not forget the real MVPs of the kitchen. Sure, a clean fridge and stove is great, but have you ever had a cup of coffee from a freshly cleaned machine? No, let me tell you, it's life-changing. I actually do this every three, is it three months or every two? Every three months, I do a descaling of my coffee makers. And so I put a vinegar water solution through it. And then once I've run it through and there's like vinegar in the system and you have to check to see, you know, what is recommended for your coffee machine, but then you let it sit in there for an hour and then you run it through more and more water in there until it's completely cleared out and all the um, water deposits, hard water deposits, um, you know, get flushed out and everything. And it, it really does make a, a difference and it will make your coffee maker work better and not start getting to points where it's just like trickling coffee out. So yeah, and it makes a difference in how your coffee tastes. So the other things that she's recommending is um, clean the coffee maker, clean the dishwasher, clean your microwave, clean, your, clean under your appliances, wash the trash can and the recycling bin, yeah, those can get kind of gross at the bottom. And disinfect your cabinet handles and doorknobs. Yeah. Okay, so that is what I am going to be taking a look at and focusing on for the next two weeks. And I hope you guys will be doing the same thing. Now, remember, it is not too late for you to get started with this. So head on over to clutterbug.com and download your 
guide that will walk you through what to do over the next 12 weeks. I hope you have fun with this and I would love to hear your comments. How did it go for you? Are, are there specific aspects of this challenge that you're excited to do? Would love to hear from you. So thanks so much for joining me at My Flex at Home. If you are not a current subscriber, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon and YouTube will let you know when I upload new videos, which is quite often. So I hope I'll see you again. Take care, you guys. Bye.